I'd like to thank Nina for the last talk. I will be incorporating that into my presentation now. Even though English is my first language, I do have quite a bit of trouble while standing in front of people. You're so, good, you're good, man. We we love you. Yeah. So I will keep conscious of the energy movement in my body and my presence here in front of you right now. And who are you? My name is Richard Hilton, and I'm here to talk about lucid dreaming, and specifically how you can use supplements to optimize your experience. We also have some supplements free samples we will be distributing at the end. So definitely stick around. Um, it's, it's worth it. In dreams, we are at the center of creation. It's a place where our thoughts and our emotions are instantly manifest in the world around us. It's a place where the only laws that exist are the ones that you believe in. We go in and out of this state many times every day in our sleep. The key to fully utilizing this state is to become conscious of it while it's happening. Lucid dreaming is specifically the awareness that you're dreaming while you're in the dream. So it's when you're having the dream that you realize that you're in the dream. It's kind of like each one of us live on an island. And this island is surrounded by a vast ocean. It's the ocean representing our subconscious experiences and our dream world. Now we could spend our whole life on the island and choose to ignore the ocean. But there are so many treasures to be had inside this ocean. It gives us a new perspective on who we are. And there's in inherent wisdom built into the dream world. And it's one of the reasons that I'm so adamant about this topic and I dedicated part of my life to just spreading this information. This is further future. So, if you did live on an island, and you were interested in exploring the ocean, you'd probably start off at the beach. And the beach is the place where the land and the ocean come together. This is also the prime territory for dreaming. The time in which we had a night of sleep, and we're waking up into the waking world. And you've seen on beaches have these great waves that are quite fun and interactive. Bringing a dream supplement into your dream practice is much like incorporating a surfboard into your ocean experience. By bringing a surfboard to the beach, you're creating an intention and you're using the surfboard to reach a goal that you preset before you showed up. The surfboard also enhances and boosts your experience while you're there, um, interacting with the waves. So there's a wide range of dream supplements that can be used, and all of them help set your focus on what you're trying to achieve. But the dream supplement that we'll be talking about today is one of the strongest and therefore the most controversial. It's one, it's still an over-the-counter supplement. You can go and purchase it online, and it's a daily memory enhancing supplement. So there's no, there's not a lot of danger involved with it. So. What is danger? <laughs> but before I get into supplements, I do want to give a quick outline of a dream practice, and then I'll talk about how you can bring the supplement into that practice. And then after I've talked about supplements, I will go into a little bit of advanced stuff once you get lucid, but some things you can, that can help you navigate the space. So, how many people here are dreaming right now? Okay, good. It is a trick question. You could answer yes or no, and you could be, by, you could be right both ways, depending on how you define dream. Our minds are amazing 
biological machines that are capable of recreating reality as vivid as what you're experiencing right now. So in a lot of con in one perspective, we're dreaming this moment, but our sensory input is what's making it a shared dream. But I do want to clarify that in this talk, whenever I use the word dreaming, I'm specifically talking about the physiological state of REM sleep. Lucid dreaming is measurable in a laboratory. So if your body isn't paralyzed, it technically isn't lucid dreaming. So some people are able to meditate and have amazing experiences, but it will not qualify as lucid dreaming unless you're asleep. So how many people here have had a lucid dream? Okay, great. That's a lot of people. So that's good to see. How many people have had more than six lucid dreams? Okay, great. That's when you're starting to get into it more and um, getting different techniques for navigating after that. And how many people have had more than 10 or 20, 15 lucid dreams? Nice. That's when you start to get uh, more profound experiences. And, uh, do you have a question? What, say it again? Whenever, as I understand them, I've had the lucid dreaming, it's always been that I'm dreaming that I'm flying, and I wake up in the dream and I say, I can fly, I'm going to wake up and fly. I have this whole dialogue, which is very lucid thing. I know how to do well, this. We can wake we up. Can do Actually, here, yeah. why don't you bring it over? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Well, well maybe, yeah, go on. I think we'll just hold questions sure. at the end, because I'll cover a lot of material. Okay. Okay. So I've had about 30 profound, meaningful lucid dreams in my life. I've had probably about 100, like, not that interesting ones that I don't care to remember. But the 30 ones that I hold on to are very precious to me. And it happened in parts of my life that I found to be very significant in my own personal development. I learned about lucid dreaming about 16 years ago. And I had never experienced it. I just was fascinated by the concept. So I started off by studying the teachings of Dr. Stephen LeBaire from the Lucidity Institute at Stanford. So my background is very scientific. And his books are very good at just giving you straight information and techniques that you can use. So after a few months of doing the practice of reading his books, I was able to have some lucid dream experiences. And so after that, I was just fascinated by the topic even more and felt that I had to tell people about it and share it. To the point that when I went to college, I studied filmmaking, and I decided to do a short documentary on the topic of lucid dreaming, which is available on YouTube called Explorers of the Lucid Dream World. Explorers of the Lucid Dream World. And in that documentary, it gave me the opportunity to speak to a lot of lucid dream experts and interview them for the documentary. This further connected me with lucid dreaming made it part of my life's purpose to share this information further. So after that, I would occasionally come up and share the documentary and, and talk about lucid dreaming and how it's affected my life, too. I would like to share that lucid dreaming was very important to me to begin with because of empowerment. When you become lucid in a dream, it can be a very empowering experience. And that's exactly what I needed in my life because I was feeling, feeling a little bit compressed and stuck. So, built into the lucid dreaming experience is a sense of empowerment that you're the center of what's being created. So that was very influential in my life. And uh, after sharing it for a period of time, I had a really amazing lucid dream that I'd like to share. It took place, in the beginning I was non-lucid and I didn't quite understand what was taking place. But I was in a room full of people and uh, they were getting ready to do something and I still didn't know what was going on but I was sure I would find out quite soon. We all went into a circle and then the person next to me injected me with something. And I woke, I slowly woke up with a profound sense of betrayal 
And I, I couldn't believe that happened. And I had the rare experience of drifting back into the exact same dream. So I'm back in that dream and I can see this circle of people. And one of them turns around and looks at me and says, shouldn't Richard be asleep? And then I say, oh, that's not necessary. Um, I'm okay. And they all turn around and start coming towards me. So at this point, I turn around and go the other way. And it opens up to a balcony. And I go up to the balcony and it, it's a quite a, a, quite a jump. But at that time, I'm almost certain that I'm lucid. And that, that I'm in the dream. So I take the chance and I jump from the balcony. And when I land softly, I know that I'm dreaming. So at that, at that moment, I become fully lucid. But they're all still pursuing me. But one technique that I've, I've learned through lucid dreaming, when I'm in scary situations, I'll just float about five or six feet above the ground and go backwards. So I can kind of see what's happening, but I feel safe because I'm above the ground. So I do this. And I can see all the, the henchmen type people coming out and pursuing me on foot, running after me. But there was this leader figure that I didn't mention who was earlier in the dream. He gets up on the balcony and he jumps into the air and he starts flying. So at this point, he's flying towards me. And I realize that he has the flying ability, which is surprising. So I decide to use another technique on him that I've learned through navigating dreams. It's a, it's a technique that I call positive center, where I try to convince the person that they should be helping, you know, they should be part of the dream with me. So I tell them that, you know, that he should be teaching these people to fly and to be lucid. But he continues to be coming at me at a fast rate, like he's still pursuing me. So I yell louder, you should be teaching lucid dreaming. And he's still coming at me. And so right before we fly, I actually pick up one of the people and I use them as a human shield. And we merge together in the sky. And after that, I wake up. And this energy that I was projecting on this other person, yelling at them to teach lucid dreaming, I felt like I had absorbed into myself. So at that moment, I changed the way that I talked about lucid dreaming. And I decided that I just wanted to talk about how to do it. I didn't want to talk about lucid dreaming. I wanted to compress information and give it to people, to give people techniques. And so that is what has led me to here. Lucid dreaming has also been an important part for public speaking because it's taken me a while just to be able to talk naturally in front of a crowd. Woo! <laughs> Woo -woo! And I do attribute that to a couple of lucid dreams that I had, but um, I may share it this time later. But to continue on, so, the first thing I'd like to share is just the basic technique that lucid dreamers use to get lucid. You don't have to try it every night. It's it's something you just schedule into your life when you get you know you can have a good night's sleep. I recommend trying it once a month and you can coordinate it with a day of the month or the cycles of the moon or however you feel like it. But when it keeps you in tune so you can keep having a dream practice. The, the technique is called wake back to bed. And what it involves is setting an alarm clock to go up two hours before you normally wake up. So you have two alarm clocks. When the first alarm clock goes off, you bring yourself to full consciousness. And then you go back to sleep with the intention of getting lucid in your dreams. So you bring your consciousness level up at that time. I would actually like to hand out a um, a piece of paper that I outlined the wake back to bed technique. And there may not be enough for everybody, so some people can share, but you're welcome to take them home. I will also hand out a clipboard where if you put your email address, I will send you the information that I'm sharing now, as well as this exact handout. So you can, you can pass this around. 
Do you, do you have a hashtag they can look up also? Or a URL or something? Uh, yes, my website is You Can Lucid Drink. So what, what I'll be sending you is, is pretty much content from that website. Dot com? Dot com, yes. You Can Lucid Drink dot com. When you start incorporating a dream practice into your life, you'll find that it's about having meaningful and vivid dreams, and occasionally lucid. So lucidity is this rare and precious state that is a little bit elusive. So I find it much more useful to just seek out vivid and meaningful dreams. And that's, that's what you're trying to achieve. And as your dreams get more vivid and interesting, you create a, a wider space to get lucid within. It's important to have a way of recording your dreams when you wake up in the morning. The most common is to have a dream journal by the bed because you need something immediately. So setting that up for yourself is an important part of this process. Uh, I'll share a little bit more information to do with the lucid dream practice at the end. Uh, now I would like to talk about supplements. There are two main categories of dream supplements. The first category helps you get deep sleep. And so the human body prioritizes deep sleep, which means when we go to bed at night, our body wants to get to the deepest level of sleep as quickly as possible. So as long as you have a safe place to sleep, the natural process is for you to get deep sleep in the beginning. There is an ultradian 90 minute cycle that takes place and every 90 minutes you go through a deep period and a, a light sleep period. The lighter sleep is when you, you enter REM sleep and uh, that's where the dreams happen. So almost all dream practices involve targeting the morning hours. Because in the, usually in the beginning of the night, your body is getting the more important deep sleep covered. The longer you sleep in, the more REM sleep you're, you allow yourself to get. Because as, as long as the deep sleep is covered, you don't need it as much. So the first category of dream supplements is designed to get your body deep sleep effectively and early. Help you get deep sleep. And these are things like melatonin, and uh, valerian root. Those are the main ones. Do oh, you have a question? Oh, probably. I bet there's a, a lot that people know. Can you say it again? Feta mute. Feta mute. Feta mute. Feta mute. That that one. Yes, there are quite a few that um, will help you get deep sleep. Okay, well, can we hold it to the end? Oh, yeah, yeah please. Sorry. So how it works is once your body, it helps you get deep sleep, so you'll tend to have lighter sleep in the morning hours. The other category of dream supplement is designed to enhance REM sleep. And these ones tend to be more potent. But the challenge is you have to already get the deep sleep out of the way. So it works into this wake back to bed practice. After getting about six hours of sleep, it would be a good time to wake up, take a dream supplement, and then go back to bed with the intention of getting lucid. There are a few different dream supplements that are available that enhance REM sleep. The most effective ones target the neurotransmitter known as acetylcholine. And there are two major ones in that category. One is called galantamine, and the other one's called huperzine A. The one that will be available as a sample is will be the one that's called galantamine. And this one comes from Western medicine. It came on the market around 30 years ago as a prescription drug for reducing the effects of Alzheimer's. After a period of time, they lowered it just to over the counter as a memory enhancing supplement. The research at the Lucidity Institute, they were doing found that acetylcholine was actually one of the more important neurotransmitters when you're asleep. 
and in REM sleep, particularly. So they became interested in all the chemicals, all the, the supplements and that enhanced the level of acetylcholine in the, in the brain. So they did study galantamine for years, and I learned about it from them because they were still doing studies with it. So when I met Dr. Stephen LaBerge, he was presenting uh, an experiment that used placebos and glatamine. And that's similar to what the samples are um, that you will receive. Or if you decide to just take this upon yourself and, and purchase glatamine online, you can incorporate it into your dream practice. And from my experience, it is the most significant or the most influential, not only from my own personal experience, but from other people's, as well as I own a device called a Zio. A Zio is a headband that you can wear and go to sleep, and it tracks your sleep cycles. It tells you how much deep sleep you're getting and how much REM sleep you're getting, and it actually prints the cycle on the screen in the morning. So I can wear this thing and take different types of supplements and see how it affects my night of sleep. And it's very amazing and surprising to see that glantamine dramatically increases REM period. It also, the first time I ever took it, which was in Hawaii at a Dreaming and Awakening retreat that, that Dr. Stephen LaBerge hosts, I had an experience where I went directly from the waking state into a dream, a smooth transition, which I hadn't experienced before. Um, I can even share that dream just to give more dream examples. I remember I was laying in my bed and I was in a tent in on um, the big island of Hawaii. And I was laying there waiting to fall asleep and I could see the ocean. And I thought, okay, if I close my eyes and I can still see the ocean, I must be dreaming. So I closed my eyes and I could still see the ocean. So I thought, oh, that's great, I'm already dreaming. But I, at this point, I was laying on my stomach, just laying there. And so I just waited. I didn't move or anything, I just laid there. And this helicopter flew over and landed off in the distance. And all these soldiers got out. And at that point, I got a little concerned. But I told, I used that same positive center technique. I said, thought to myself, well, those soldiers must be there to protect me. Otherwise, you know, there would be no point in being against me because I'm the center of the dream. So as the soldiers approached, they were, turned out to be very helpful. And they helped move this, this giant rock that was on my back and then helped me up. And at that point, I started to travel with these people. I actually woke up at that point, but it was still a great, a great experience. So you may experience that phenomenon of going directly from a wake state into a dream. Uh, if you're interested in having that happen, there is a way that you can take the supplement that will increase the likelihood of that happening. And the way that you do it is when you take glantamine into your system, it takes about 45 minutes for it to peak in your bloodstream and in your brain. That's the ideal time to be falling asleep. So if you can take glantamine, wait 20 minutes, and then lay down in your bed, and don't fall asleep, just lay there and keep yourself awake. So you're trying to slow down the falling asleep process, and then allow yourself to fall asleep. That is the way you can help that process. But it does show that there are different ways that it can affect you. So you can have a lot of different outcomes from this. And it is a balancing act, because some people find it hard to fall asleep, and some people find it hard to stay awake. So depending on which one of those you feel you are, you can just adjust your practice to meet that. So example, the handout I gave out, you can adjust the times to whatever fits better for your, cycle, for your lifestyle. There's a uh, waiver form that I would like people to sign 
before they receive one of the supplement packages. So I just want to let you know that the waiver is just to remove any liability um, because it's just safer and I don't know all of you that well. But I do believe in this process enough that I, I'm willing to, to share it in this context. Uh, so is it, have I been clear about the, the if you receive this, this sample package, which is, to, it's actually four pills of galantamine and each pill is four milligrams. That's the package that you will receive this evening. So that's, and you only take one at a time. So it gives you four opportunities. Four milligrams is actually a half dose. So if for some reason you didn't feel like it was strong enough, you can, you can take two together. And that would be eight milligrams, which is a full dose of glycemine. You're also welcome to contact me if you have questions or you want to share the experience. I'm always really interested and curious about the experiences that people have. And there's a wide range. I've heard things like even two partners that sleep in the same bed together where one person reports that there was no effect and the other one has this dramatic, amazing dream story that takes place. So there's, there's all kinds of things that happen. And one of the reasons that I would rather give people four is because it may take that many times to have a good experience from it. Because you know, you're, you're still trying to figure out what's the best way to do it. And from my per experience, I believe that it, if, I do it, if I do this dream practice four times, I'll get lucid once, I'll have a couple of good dreams, and one time it'll be a failure. That's just what I believe in my own practice. So I don't get lucid every time. It's, it's actually like a rare, precious, and amazing state. It's also good to go to bed early on nights that you do this practice. It just helps you get the deep sleep out of the way earlier. And uh, like I mentioned, to, to schedule it ahead of time so you do, it just fits into your life better. Um, are there any questions about specifically receiving glantamine and incorporating it into a dream practice? And repeat the question. I, he said, are there any other side effects? Um, the answer would be you, a slight increase in memory ability, because it is a, a memory enhancing supplement. I have experienced a headache in the afternoon. So if you wake up at five in the morning and you take a dream supplement, and then have some amazing dream, and then wake up and go about your day, it is like waking up that early in, a, in some way. So I, I have experienced a headache. And that, other than that, I haven't really heard of any other. It's, it's pretty safe. You can have bad dream experiences. So I should address that too. I like to believe that all dream experiences are good for us because it's your own inner realm that you're exploring in. And even if you're facing up against some kind of intimidating or grotesque experience, if you're able to overcome it in some way or face up to it or just be in the presence of it, it can be beneficial to your waking life. There's wisdom built into those experiences, especially the profound ones, the scary ones, and the repeating ones. A lot of advanced lucid dreamers are envious when they hear someone talk about their nightmare because it's a great opportunity to have a transcendent experience at that time. Nightmares are very powerful at bringing your awareness up because it's a scary situation that you have to deal with. I would like to share that there is another possible outcome of taking glantamine and even just doing a dream practice that many people may have experienced. There is a phenomenon known as sleep paralysis. And how many people here have heard of that term and have had that experience? Okay, as you can see, it's, it's a lot of hands, um, which makes sense since, since so many people here have had a lucid dream. Two, at some point, it seems like you're gonna run up against this phenomenon that is labeled sleep paralysis. There are two things that you should know about sleep paralysis. One is that once, when you're in it, you can identify it as sleep paralysis. And second, once you can identify it as sleep paralysis, you know that you're safe. 
And the third, which is supposed to be the second, is that if you want to get out of it, what you have to do is relax. There's something about paralysis that if you attempt to fight it, it gets stronger. So also the nature of the dream world is one in which if you engage it, it, it stays there. But if you let go of it, 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 it fades away. So if you're having an experience after taking glance me that you're laying in your bed and you can't move and there's an intruder in the room, you can identify that as sleep paralysis. And you can feel the fear, because the fear doesn't go away. And then have an experience with it, but know that you're safe. And if you want to get out of it, because I've had the experience of identifying as sleep paralysis, sensing an intruder, and deciding that my best option is to wake up, then then you know that you just have to relax and let go. But dreams, but sleep paralysis can, is a great gateway into dreaming. If you can stay with it and transition into a dream, then you can have a profound experience with it. There's certain advanced techniques about rolling out of a uh, sleep paralysis experience and then going into a dream or what some people would classify as out-of-body experience. But in the context of lucid dreaming, you could also identify it as a lucid dream experience. Question. Say how soon? Mm -hmm. Yes. When you what's the question? Do, how soon you should you take the supplement in the morning? So when you wake up with the first alarm clock, you can just take it immediately because it slowly builds up in your system. And then the the studies have found that if you wait 20 minutes before falling asleep you have the, the best effects or the, the best experiences just graph over time of like logging people's experiences with it. So if you can stay awake for 20 minutes, that helps, but it's really up to you what you do. I sometimes just have an alarm clock that goes off and I just turn off immediately and go back to bed. It's really just your own decision making on that process. Do you have a question? Okay, okay yes. So, you may take glantamine and have some amazing vivid dream experiences. But, one thing that you would need to be able to do is determine at any given moment if you're in a dream or not. So can anyone here prove to us that you're either awake or dreaming right now? What was, can you say it again? So what's, what would the test be? She says, cannot fly. Mm -hmm. That is one of my go-to for sure. She said, you can just jump and you'll, you can fly. So the, the, the official category of that would be testing gravity. Hashtag anti-gravity. That's, that's part of this, the test. So, the, so for the most part, we don't know. Ultimately and philosophically, we don't know. But there is a way to determine if you're in a physiological state of REM sleep. And that one of the tests is to test gravity. Meaning, if you can go like this, you can feel gravity and it has a very recognizable feeling to it. He says he cannot see his reflection in the mirror. I'll go to that in a second, but I'll, I'll just complete the gravity one real fast because in a dream, oftentimes you'll still go up and down. I just want to make that clear, but it can be moon gravity. And if you're experiencing moon gravity, you can be pretty certain you're not in this physical earth. And at that moment, you can get lucid and feel comfortable that you're the center of the dream. Welcome to Luna. I'd like to share another reality test that's known as the most effective one. And it's called text rereading. That one involves finding a piece of text, which I don't, is not always available, but
But if there is text, what you do is you read the text, and then you look away from it, and then you reread the text. If the text stays the same, then you can be pretty certain that you're awake. But if the text changes, then you can be pretty certain that you're dreaming. With some exceptions, of course. But if you feel still feel uncertain, you can do another test. But if the text changes in a dreamlike way, you'll know. So text is very unstable in the dream world. And when you look away from anything in a dream, in some ways it disappears from existence until you look back. So that's how that technique works. And Ravi mentioned the mirror. From our own experiences with dreams, it's everyone has this unique realm where we have these different experiences and some things are reliable and we rely on them. And you had mentioned that when you look in the mirror you cannot see yourself. And if you do go up to a mirror and you cannot see yourself, then that would be a good indicator that you could be dreaming. But I know that some people have seen themselves in a mirror, which means that for some people it wouldn't be as reliable as just testing gravity. So there are a lot of different techniques, but people still, if you're paying attention to that, and that's one of those phenomenons in your dream world that you can rely on, then that, that's important to note. Because if you just happen to look at yourself in the mirror and it's not there, you can get lucid and have an amazing experience from there. I guess. This is Further Future from Robot Heart. We are in the Wild Lotus Wellness tent. We're, we're so in she Wild just Lotus shared Wellness. that she had a dream in which she did see herself in the mirror and it was, it was a very profound experience. Um, there's only a couple more things I'm going to share and then I'm going to just um, go into the next topic and also allow people to um, collect the sample packages. Another thing that you need to know is that when you're asleep and in a dream, you cannot store long-term memories the same way that we store them now. And that's, what, that's the reason that we don't remember our dreams. It's just the brain state is evolutionarily designed that we don't remember all that stuff. Because it could be quite confusing. So this is important to know for two reasons. The first is that when we wake up in the morning, the only reason we remember anything at all is because we are storing short-term memory. So when we're dreaming, we're, we can remember what just happened. But we may not be able to remember what happened a while ago. So when you wake up in the morning, what you're doing is you're taking your short-term memory and putting it into your long-term memory because you're awake. That's the act of doing dream recall. And that's the practice that dreamers develop. A person who says, I don't remember my dreams is someone who, when they wake up in the morning, they move forward. They may have something in their short-term memory, but they don't pay attention to it, so it, they don't develop the technique of moving that into long-term memory. It is something that even a person who says, I don't dream, can develop that practice. And that would involve, when you wake up in the morning, even though that moment, you're still in the habit of thinking ahead, you can just close your eyes and think backwards. And no, you'll almost get nothing. You can just like, even if you get nothing, you still do it. And over time, you build up the ability to recall the dream. The other reason that's really important to understand that we only store short-term memory in dreams is because the moment that we get lucid, you only have that amount of time to have an amazing experience. So the best lucid dreams that I've ever had are ones in which I've gotten lucid, I've decided to do something, and then I've woken up and recalled it from the beginning. Because the moment you get lucid is often very amazing and exhilarating and interesting too, because it's such a, a profound realization that the, that the experience that you're having is actually an inner experience, even though it's convincingly vivid in any aspect that you test. So when you get lucid, just remember that you have a period of time to that you can remember. And then you should wake up and recall. And a couple other things is, now that you know, if you accept the dream practice, you will get lucid at some point in your life. It's kind of a lifelong practice, and you just allow dreams to be elusive, and there'll be a certain time in your life where you're 
you're getting great rest and you're dreaming more and other times where your dreaming is not a priority. But you can contemplate. If I were to get lucid right now, what would I like to do? What would be my predetermined goal that I would like to accomplish? So that also helps you set intentions to have a, a, a goal as well as like a desire. I want to have this experience. Um, the uh, one that a lot of people start on is flying because it's exhilarating and it's easy to do. And it's achievable. But as you do have flying dreams, you can move on to other topics. You can start to choose things like healing. And uh, I like, for me now, all of my goals are I would like to be in the presence of because I allow the dream to take whatever form it wants, but I invoke some aspect. And a common one is I would like to be in the presence of the divine, or however you would make that statement. Or I would like to be in the presence of a spirit guardian animal. And those dreams can be, you can allow them to be the way that they manifest themselves. Because a lot of times if your goal is very specific, like I want to fly to further future and check out what's happening right then. You may find that it's harder to find for the future than you had anticipated. Because even with full lucidity, the dream world still has its own personality. And you may find that although you can control a lot of aspects, you can shape shift things and move things, there's a whole lot of aspects that will not cooperate. And part of the wisdom of the dream when those things happen is that lucidity is so much about controlling your inner response to what's happening, which you have full control over. So the best way to manipulate a dream is to manipulate your inner experience of that dream, to shift emotions and to change the perspective, such as the positive center technique, which is just to see things as, as serving you. Otherwise, why else would it be there? So the last thing I want to share is that a common phenomenon is that people say that they get lucid and then it fades out. So a dream stabilization technique is to rub your hands together. So when you get lucid, you can just do this immediately if you want in the dream because it helps stabilize the dream. And what's taking place is you're rubbing your dream hands together. And when you do this, it reinforces the dream. So it helps keep it there. There's also a dream spinning technique where you spin around like this. And that one works too. Like if you're in a dream and it starts to fade away, you can spin around and that also engages your dream body and keeps you in the dream. The nature of the dream world is one in which you have to stay engaged with your surroundings, with the dream itself. Otherwise it just fades away. So you have to keep moving and interacting and doing. Otherwise, you'll end up waking up earlier. So, uh, how are we with time? Is it, should I? Let's, uh, I say we, how are y'all, I say we conclude here. If, uh -huh. uh, do you have anything, uh, one more minute of anything that comes to take a breath and just feel into if there's anything else within the next minute you'd like to share and then you can give us your name again and where we can find you and then that'll be it. Okay. So I would like to just share again that I, this is part of my life's purpose. I am adamant about this topic and I want to share it with as many people as possible. So I'm, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to talk about it or email through email or just at this event. And we'll be distributing glass meat in this area in the back. We may move out, out of this area if it's too cluttered or anything, but. Yeah, we'll go to the back for now. Okay. And uh, just dive in, have a great experience with it. And my website is youcanluciddream.com. Hashtag lucid dream, hashtag you can lucid dream, hashtag luciddream.com. You can lucid dream.com, L U C I D. Thank you very much. I lost train time. That was amazing. Thank you, Yeah. And uh, may I offer um, a couple of 
ideas real quick since you may be about to embark upon this experience of setting an intention of lucid dreaming. I would offer a couple of real quick perspectives. One is that you set, that you consider, I invite you to set an intention that also leaves you open to realizing reality as a lucid dream. That lucid dreaming may not be exclusive to when you think you are sleeping. And um, a practice that may encourage this perspective in waking life might be something like Vipassana meditation mixed with a practice of leading into building community across fear. So in other words, as you see that you can connect with people and spread ideas, and you remain equanimous to how you feel in that experience, you may rapidly begin to find, over t well, you may find over time, the perspective arising that you're able to more and more efficiently and effectively manifest what seems like only used to be possible in a dream world in reality. So, hashtag lucid dream, hashtag I can lucid dream, hashtag you can lucid dream, and you can lucid dream. Com. Um, also, to be sure, um, we are videoing all of these presentations. They're going to go up on YouTube. Um, does anybody have a sincere issue with having already been in a video? It's okay if you do. Come up and let me know, and we will discuss. If you otherwise, it will go up on YouTube, and um, all of this media will be available at hashtag plural life. That's plural, as in many or multiple. P L U R A L I F E, plural life. And that's peace, love, unity, respect, awareness, life. How does one get in, you know, how does one practice the plural life? I F E, introspection, fun, embodiment. One L, plural life. So hashtag plural life on any social media online. You'll find all of the media that I've captured from this event, including this video of this presentation, the previous one, I got a concert from yesterday, whatever. Different media is plural life. So thank you very much. And go see them in the back for any galantamine or any further questions. For the rest of this experience, we are inviting anybody who wishes to share a personal narrative of transformation. It could be tied to what you do, quote unquote, professionally, or for quote unquote work. Or it could just be a personal narrative. It could be a poem. It could really be anything. But we're, we're setting an intention of creating a, an open space, an open container for very personal sharing of whatever kind. So um, is anybody offhand interested? Go ahead and raise your hand. And uh, you can actually present anything, honestly. And I just want to set an intention of doing personal stuff. I think it's an interesting space to explore. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break here for five minutes while they take care of that in the back. And then we will resume. So set an intention if you want to try an open mic style, anything. This is like an open container. Thank you.